Book One, Chapter Two of A Hero of Our Time. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kevin Davidson. A Hero of Our Time by Mikhail Yurovich Lermontov. Translated by Mara Murray and J. H. Wisdom. Book One. Chapter Two. You see, sir, said the staff captain, I was quartered at the time with a company in a fortress beyond the Terek, getting on for five years ago now. One autumn day, a transport arrived with provisions in charge of an officer, a young man of about twenty five. He reported himself to me in full uniform and announced that he had been ordered to remain in the fortress with me. He was so very elegant his complexion so nice and white, his uniform so brand new, that I immediately guessed that he had not been long with our army in the Caucasus. "'I suppose you've been transferred from Russia?' I asked. "'Exactly, Captain,' he answered. I took him by the hand and said, "'I'm delighted to see you, delighted. It will be a bit dull for you, but there we will live together like a couple of friends. But please, call me simply Maxim Maximitch. And tell me, what is this full uniform for? Just wear your forage cap whenever you come to me. Quarters were assigned to him, and he settled down in the fortress. What was his name? I asked Maxim Maximitch. His name was Grigory Alexandrovich Pechorin. He was a splendid fellow, I can assure you, but a little peculiar. Why, to give you an instance, one time he would stay out hunting the whole day, in the rain and cold, the others would be all frozen through and tired out, but he wouldn't mind either cold or fatigue. Then another time he would be sitting in his own room, and if there was a breath of wind he would declare that he had caught cold. If the shutters rattled against the window he would start and turn pale, yet I myself have seen him attack a boar single-handed. Often enough you couldn't drag a word out of him for hours together, but then, on the other hand, sometimes, when he started telling stories, you would split your sides with laughing. Yes, sir, very eccentric man, and he must have been wealthy, too. What a lot of expensive trinkets he had. Did he stay long with you? I went on to ask. Yes, about a year, and for that very reason it was a memorable year to me. He gave me a great deal of trouble. But there, let bygones be bygones. You see, it is true enough, there are people like that, fated from birth to have all sorts of strange things happening to them. Strange? I exclaimed with an air of curiosity as I poured out some tea. End of Book One, Chapter Two Recording by Kevin Davidson www.blogordie.com